Hi, I'm Carlo Midione, and this is Carlo Cooks Italian. Today, we'll sample some typical rustic dishes that you'd find if you were touring throughout southern Italy's countryside. Zucchini a scapici, marinated zucchini, is a zesty relish of onions over zucchini. Fanny frattao, bread and cheese soup, is a sophisticated blend of flavors that comes from humble origins. And calamari, con piselli alla romana, or squid and peas, is an elegant, tasty combination from Rome. Venite, cucinare con me. Come cook with me. I'm Carlo Cooks Italian. Welcome to my kitchen. Zucchini a scapici, or marinated zucchini, is one of the top-selling dishes at my restaurant, Vivande, in San Francisco. These zucchini are versatile and can be eaten as a kind of a salad, or you can use it as a side dish for roasted meats or fish or fowl. And scapici comes from the word, in Spanish word, escabeche. You know, um, Spain occupied southern Italy for 500 years, so there's obviously going to be a lot of crossover in food and in um, uh, terminology. And, you know, escabiche, as I know it, is when you take mostly raw fish and put lemon juice on them, and, you, and then you just uh, eat them after a few hours because they're just perfectly done that way. So this has a nice savory sort of that kind of a flavor to it. It's sharp and really very zesty and tasty. Now, for my zucchini here, um, these are nice sizes. If you get some that are too big, you should be careful because they won't be as sweet and as nice and tender as these. And we need about six or eight of them, about one and a half pounds total. And they should be firm, and you look at them, get all, all the clear ones as much as you can. And if there's a little spot here, and otherwise it looks pretty good, just take a knife and cut that spot out, because you want them to be as nice as they can be. So <clears throat> I'm just going to trim the ends like this. These are, not, these are not very good to eat. And I'm just going to cut this over here uh, into slices about this thick over here. And I've got some already going. I'm just going to show you this, how you can do these. I'm using the long ones like this today on purpose because I have a dish that I like to present them like this, and you see, there they are. But if you had um, other ideas about how you could do the shaping of them, for instance, if you wanted to have these more as a little salad in a bowl or whatever, you could use a crimp cutter. Here's one that you can buy in a specialty food store or in a, in a good uh, kitchen shop. You see, this makes nice little cuts like this. That's kind of neat. You, you could see those. Then there's this kind. You can, sometimes you can get these in even hardware stores. I've seen them or in kitchen supply places, and this makes a bigger cut. It's like this. This is kind of neat, too. It's kind of fun to do, you know, if you just want to do a few of these up. But it's up to you. The cut is um, less important than, than the way we're going to do these, huh? So I'll just leave these here, and I want to go over and take care of making our zucchini. <clears throat> now, over here, I've got a pan that's heated up. Uh, maybe I need a little bit more heat over here. And I'm going to put in some extra virgin olive oil. I'm putting in about three tablespoons. You know, if it's a little less, a little more, it really doesn't matter. You just have to have enough to be able to fry the zucchini. And also, you have to be able to get some color on these because if they don't colorize, get a little caramel on them, they're just not going to be as tasty as they ought to be. So that's one reason for not just sort of dumping these all in. See, I've got them all laid up in, a, in sort of in a rows like this. Because if you just throw them in, they're going to get steamy, in other words. Okay, and when you're putting stuff into oil, be careful. You notice how I laid them in that way. If they splash out, the oil will go the other way. So these are going to just fry here, and I'm going to try to keep my eye on them here to see if I don't burn them up. Um, over here, I've got an onion. This one's sautéing. I've got one onion cut sort of thin, and I just sautéed it in a little extra virgin olive oil. And now these are nice and caramelized. They're not quite as dark as they ought to be, but they're going to be there in a minute. So I'm going to add some garlic to this. And while I keep an eye on this, I'm going to come over here and work on my garlic. Now, here I've got some peeled garlic. And one of the best ways to do this is to uh, just hit these really hard like this so that they smash out. This way, you can use a garlic press if you want to, but I sort of like 
cutting my own. So I just got to chop these all up. And you know, you don't have to make the pieces super fine. You just want to make sure that they're not big, great big chunks, okay? And this seems like quite a bit of garlic, but it really isn't, because once this cooks up, it's going to be real tasty. Now, in about a couple of seconds here, I'll be ready to put these in with my onions and check out my zucchini. There, and that's good enough. Now, I could make them a little smaller if I wanted to, but this is going to be fine. So I put these in here. And then, before I even, well, I'm just going to stir these up and get them going. Now, this garlic cooks pretty fast, so keep an eye on it. I'm going to check these out over here. Yep, see, I'm getting some color. This is nice. Now, you want to just turn these over. And, you know, if they're real dark, they're going to be a little too dark. If they're too light, they're going to be too light. So I may need to turn these one more time. We'll just see how we're going on this. Okay? Now, <clears throat> what else do I need to do? As these are cooking over here, I need to ask, add about uh, two-thirds of a cup of uh, red wine vinegar. You could use white wine, but red wine is really the best. And you want to cook this down. And I want to put in some sage leaves here. And I have fresh sage. You could cut the sage with a knife if you wanted to. Or you could just do like I'm doing here, which is to just chop them up with my fingers like this and just throw them in. And the sage it makes a really nice sort of smooth finish to it all. Well, okay, that has to cook down, and when that's done, it's going to look very much like these that are also done. And over here, well, they need more time, so they'll just have to wait for another day. But here I've got some that are already finished, and I'm going to take my, my dressing here, which really smells terrific, and I'm going to pour these around. I'm not going to just smother this dish, but I'm going to go around like this, and here and there. Just push these around here, and around here. And you see, I have quite a bit of juice here. If I had a little bit less, it would be okay. But this is going to be absolutely perfect like that. Now, to make zucchini a scapicci, you're going to need six to eight zucchini, about one and a half pounds, half a cup or so extra virgin olive oil, one medium yellow onion, three or four cloves of garlic, two fresh sage leaves, a pinch of salt, and two-thirds cup of good wine vinegar, red or white. You can serve zucchini escapici hot from the kitchen or later cool to room temperature. Actually, they're best when they've had a chance to marinate overnight, but always let them warm up to room temperature. Never serve these icy cold. Never. Next, pane fatale, bread and cheese soup. Pane fatale, bread and cheese soup, started out as an economy dish, but it's grown in stature over the years because now it includes things that, in those days, would have been considered luxury. That's a long time ago, you know. For instance, eggs and marinara sauce. Bani Fratao is made with Sardinian music paper bread, which is very thin and translucent. But you'll see it forms the basis for a very hearty dish. Pretty, too. I'll give you the exact amount for this recipe later, but to start, we need to get ready to poach some eggs. And what I've got over here is I've got some water heating up, heating up and I've got a <clears throat> non-aluminum pan the reason for using non-aluminum is that aluminum that com, you know combines with egg can discolor it and make it sort of gray. And you don't want that. So it could be ceramic or glass or whatever. But I'm going to put in some vinegar, not too much because I don't want to have uh, vinegary tasting eggs. But the reason I put vinegar in or I could use lemon juice is that it creates a little bit of acid in the water. And when the albumin, and that's the white part of the egg, hits the water, it'll tend to congeal and stay together more than, um, especially if your eggs aren't fresh. Otherwise, it just sort of scatters all over the water. So that's just going to stay there until I'm ready for it, which is in about a minute. But anyhow, um, I'm going to use some of my favorite strong chicken or meat stock. You can use whichever one you like. But I made my stock with um, a chicken over here. This is about a three-pound chicken. And I cut it up into 16 or 18 pieces. And don't be worried about it. I mean, just cut it up any way you want. And then I add a, um, some a carrot. I added one carrot. I added a couple of stalks of celery, a nice big onion. And a couple of nice big uh, pieces of uh, parsley here, just the leaves, just throw them in like that. A bay leaf, three cloves of garlic, you smack them open, and some peppercorns. And then you just poach that for about an hour and a half until it's really nice. And then, you know, <clears throat> you have a good broth with the meat. You take that out and you can either eat it hot with some olive oil on it or save it cold to make it into a salad. So that way you get a meal two ways, okay? So now I'm going to do my eggs. 
Uh, this is a, a large egg, grade A large egg, just like that. And when you break these, make sure you don't break up the yolk, huh? Because if you do, then you're not going to have the kind of an egg that I want to get here. So I'm going to start swirling my water in a circle like this, and the center part of it, as you can see, begins to do what's called vortex. And this vortex means that, you see how that egg is sort of getting all together like that? Now instead of the egg just shattering and going all over the water and all over the pan, it's sort of wrapping on itself, okay? And that'll mean that it'll cook just a little nicer, it'll be better for you. Now I'm gonna just pay attention to this a little bit, and I wanna spoon a little bit of water on to make sure that it works, but that's gonna be okay. Now, if you don't wanna make the vortex and all that, you could take a couple of tuna fish cans or these are cookie cutters, you could use these, something like this, and it depends on what size you want your egg to be. But you could lightly oil these with a little bit of vegetable oil, olive oil or whatever, and you put these into your simmering water, and then you take your egg and you break it and pour it in like that, and it works. It's cheap and it's easy, and that what keeps you from having to be too concerned about how your eggs are gonna, gonna come out. So that's okay. Now all I have to do is get my bread together here. This is Sardinian, this is Carta Musica, Sardinian parchment bread, and it's beautiful. See, it's thin. And I'm just gonna break up some pieces here. Look at that, I love the sound of that too. And I'm gonna, I don't know, I'm gonna need about this much to make my, my soup, huh? And then what I'm gonna do is, um, I have a warm soup plate over here. I'm gonna <clears throat> dip this into my hot chicken stock here, and I wanna start to collapse this bread, you see how I'm doing here? And I wanna put this in, and I wanna put this in here. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more soup, because I don't want this to be like, you know, like a real soup it's in, in itself. I just want it to be nice and supple, okay? I'm gonna add a little bit more stock here like this. Put this right on here and see that isn't too soupy. And then I've got some marinara sauce over here and I wanna add this. Let me put this over like this, okay? And as I say, I don't wanna just, don't heap it up, huh? So let's see how we're doing here with our egg. Well, to me, this looks like it would be done. Now, some people like their eggs cooked longer, but I'm, I'm not of that school. I like mine to be, oh, you know, not exactly just like running like water, but I like them nice and really supple where the albumin is tender and where the yolk, when I break it, will sort of spread out a bit. Now, here's the only tricky part. Don't break that yolk. Now, here we go. <clears throat> this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it right here in the center. And then I have one more thing to do. And let's get on some really wonderful pecorino cheese. And this I grate fresh, and here we go. And put on plenty of this, because you wanna be sure that you get some good flavors. Now, this is a dish that should be served very, very hot. Now, when you wanna make pane fratel, you'll need one and a half cups of strong chicken or meat stock, three cups of marinara sauce, four tablespoons of white wine vinegar, six large eggs, six pieces of parchment bread about five inches across, and one cup of grated pecorino sardo cheese. As you can see, a rather poor dish has evolved into a rather rich and tasty dish with a real mix of flavors here. The ingredients dictate how successful this dish is gonna be. The bread should be properly made, the eggs should be as fresh as you can get them, and the marinara sauce and the broth should be really rich in flavor. With those in hand, you can make a really, truly scrumptious dish for brunch or for dinner. Next, calamari con piselli alla romana, squid and peas, Roman style. Calamari con piselli alla romana, squid and peas, Roman style, is a fresh, delicate dish that would be perfect for a late dinner or after an evening on the town. I particularly like the addition of peas because they contribute a sweet flavor to this dish. Peas are one of the few vegetables which are good frozen, but you know, it also means that because they're available and because they're frozen and that they're good, you can have this dish all throughout the year, whereas in Rome, you mostly get this just in springtime. Now, I'm gonna tell you more about peas, but I've got a hot pan here. Actually, it's too hot, so I'm gonna cool it off put my onions in here to get them going because we have to have some onions for this dish and now it's going to be fine because there's something in there but you know the thing about uh, peas is that i really do love garden peas and i end up using frozen ones a fair amount of the time because you know why the fresh garden peas are deceptive when you buy them you know they look very fresh and they look very 
slim and those pods look delicious and then there's nothing in them or you open them up and there's uh, there's a few really nice little ones and then there's a whole bunch of these big wooden ones and you, you, it's just like eating marbles and you know who needs that so i found that it's a good vegetable for that and also as i say it's convenient because you can make this dish whenever you want because the peas are always available now i'm going to get working on some squid over here i've got clean squid you can buy squid that's already um been, maybe even frozen or fresh that's that's not clean and if you do that you can save quite a bit of money because the squid over here like i've got well, this was about two dollars and fifty cents more per pound than um, you know the kind that you have to clean yourself. So it's just all a matter of whether you want to whether you want to do the work or not. And inside these bodies, you have to watch out. Sometimes there's a cuddle bone, a little little. I don't see any in here today, but uh, occasionally I get these. They, they look like cellophane, but they're sort of stiff and they're not very pleasant to eat. I mean, they wouldn't kill you, but you know, on the other hand, you may not be able to chew them either. So anyhow, whether you clean your own squid or buy them like this. Just cut these into some kind of circles like this, or you could actually do, ah, here we have a piece of cuddle bone. You see that? Now, you don't necessarily want to give that to one of your guests because that's kind of a nuisance. It wouldn't kill you, as I said, but it's very unpleasant. So I'm going to get these cut and put them on my dish and get them ready for use later on. But in the meantime, I want to stir my onions over here. I want to get these all together. Well, anyhow, as I was saying, about peas, um, you know, when I go to Rome, I, I love to eat outdoors, especially in those, those great little restaurants where you can have all kinds of things. And in the springtime, when they do have the really good peas available, they have some wonderful dishes of pasta. You just cook little tiny um, bits of pasta and you put peas and you put some grated goat cheese on it or some pecorino cheese and a little bit of red pepper flakes and you have a terrific meal. Now look, these are golden. They want to cook just a little bit longer but this is going to be enough. I just want to add my peas over here to mix them around. Stir these all around. And then I'm going to add some wine. Now, we always use white wine for this, but if you absolutely can't have white wine or red wine for that matter, use about one-third vinegar and two-thirds water. It won't be the same as this, but, you know, it'll be something. So, okay. Now, these just have to cook up here for a minute until the alcohol blows off and i think this is almost done like this and i do this to smell how it goes i can smell whether the alcohol is in there or not and i think that there isn't any in there that i'm going to worry about so these just go off the fire like this and then i'm going to wipe out my pan here because i'm going to use it again you could use another pan for this if you wanted to but here i'm going to add some more olive oil and then i'm going to add some garlic. I have a couple of nice cloves of garlic here. And these I'm going to leave whole, but I'm just going to smash them really good like this and just put them in my pan, okay? And I'm doing this because I want to flavor up the oil. And also, when you find a nice little batch of garlic in there, it's really good for you to eat, huh? So now as soon as this comes back up to heat, usually they're too hot and then they're not hot enough. That's the way pans are, like people. So we put in our parsley. And just let that cook. Now, it's unusual that you do this, but this adds a really nice flavor to it. You have a little bit of extra flavor there when you do it this way. Then I'm going to add my squid. Mmm, that smells very good now. So here we go. I'm just going to add all the squid here and stir this around. Now, by doing it this way, you get kind of extra flavor than if you just were to throw everything into the pan, right? So this gets turned around here and stirred around until the squid begins to lose its sort of opaque color and it gets that nice sort of white color. Now, I'm going to add a little salt. I always use sea salt. And you don't want to bury it in salt, but you have to have some, right? And then I'm going to add back all of those things that we cooked before. Let's see, this needs one more stir here. All right. Now look, and this becomes you know, I hate to call this a soup because it really isn't. It's a, it's like a, a soufato. It's like an umido. This is like a real fast little saute dish. And there, there it is. It's really wonderful. Now, I'm going to show you what it's like when we get ready to dish it up over here. You see, it should be liquid, but it shouldn't be like a soup. And this is a terrific dish to serve with crusty bread. You should always serve it in a nice hot plate, and you should have 
give your guests some spoons to eat it with because there's lots of delicious juices to go on it. Let me get you a few of these little curly cues here. Those are fantastic. Now that's a really gorgeous dish. To make calamari con piselli alla romana, you'll need a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, one large yellow onion, 10 to 12 ounces of fresh or frozen peas, two thirds cup of dry white wine, two cloves of garlic, quarter cup of Italian parsley, two pounds of squid, salt to taste, and three or four grindings of black pepper. This menu exemplifies the range of southern Italian cooking from zesty and aggressive to simple and elegant. Zucchini a scapicci, marinated zucchini, combines the tang of vinegar and onions with the crisp texture of fried zucchini. Everyone loves this contrast of flavors that wakes up your appetite. Bani frattao, bread and cheese soup, has grown over the generations into an enticing recipe that will satisfy your hunger and your taste buds. The marinara sauce, the egg, and the parchment bread create a feast for the eyes as well. Calamari con piselli alla romana, squid and peas from Rome, bring the freshness of the sea and the garden together for one appetizing dish. If you'd like wine with this meal, I'd recommend that you try a nozzi d'oro from Regaliali. It's a white wine that's crisp and clean and very slightly fruity. It would be terrific with all of our dishes. Well, that's it for now in Bocalupo.